What's up YouTube, this is TJ here with you. Today we're going over episode five of reviewing Ram Dass. Today our subject is one-pointedness. So what is one-pointedness of mind? One-pointedness of mind means you bring your, your mind to a single point and you keep your focus back over and over and over again. So for those of us who have meditated before, we know how difficult this can be, but we also know how beneficial it can be for our minds, for our bodies, spiritually, and a whole other list of benefits. For those of us who have not meditated before, then you will soon discover that one point this can be very difficult. But in this clip today, Ram Dass speaks about how it can be helpful for us. And then he goes on to explain a little further the spiritual aspect of one point to this of mind. To give you a clear view of what exactly he's talking about earlier in the podcast, he was speaking about his guru or the, the being named Ma Maharaji that helped him and taught him. And he was wondering how Maharaji was able to do the things he did or have the powers that we can call them. And he realized that eventually that he got to that point through what we call one point in this. So keeping your mind at a single point. So an example of this would be your breath. So the breath in my nose, I can keep bringing my focus back to my nose. Even his thoughts all day, every day, they keep pulling your focus back. And of course, we all know what that's like. Where you get agitated, we get anxious, and our thoughts just keep pulling our focus away, but we keep pulling it back. And eventually this gets easier and easier, and we're able to do this and to soothe the mind and the body and to have that, that one point in this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this clip from Ram Das. Have a wonderful Christmas, and we'll see you. Once you've made your mind one pointed, right now here's the way you work. You get you get your mind calmer and calmer, as the, as the Mahamudra vow says. At first, uh, Tilopa's thing of Mahamudra, at first, the mind is like a waterfall. Your mind's going in all directions. It's like a wild, drunken monkey, Vivekananda says. It's like a monkey that is moving to begin with, that you've fed wine to, so it's drunk in addition, and it's just been bitten by a scorpion. That was Vivekananda's way of creating what the mind is like. You know, it's just jumping from thing to thing. I got an itch. I hear your word. I'm thinking about this. Gee, I wonder. Gee, it's dark. You know, like the seats are hard. I got to go to the bathroom. You know, like 10,000 things. And they just like, oh, flip, 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 flip. It's called free association. <laughs> okay, there it all is. That's the drunken monkey. So pretty soon what you do, those are called the vrittis and the chitta. I won't get you into the terminology tonight because uh, that's too much. It sounds like double talk, but. What you do slowly is you calm down these waves until pretty soon it's just like a very fast-moving river. And the way you do that is by getting into the witness and watching it all happen. That's one way of doing it. And pretty soon as you're watching it all happen, it starts to happen less and less because you, you're not lost in it as much. And you sort of cease to let your mind, you just watched it and it sort of becomes embarrassed. It's very funny. It's like your ego gets embarrassed under the scrutiny of this thing. And then finally, it gets just like an ocean. Your mind is perfectly calm. I mean, you're just perfectly calm. And now, when you work on becoming one pointed in your thinking, say you're doing Tratak, which is a technique of working with a candle flame. This is part of, this is one of the arms of yoga, uh, which is um, Pratyahara. You look at an external object. Now, most people, when they look at a candle flame, they sit down, you, the candle flame should be up here, it should be right above where your ajna is, the sixth chakra. You look at the candle flame and you try to make something happen. Well, already you've lost. The game is you put the candle there and you are here and that's it. That's all you gotta do. You just sit here and you just, there's you and there's the candle. You don't look at the candle, you just be here and there's the candle being there. It's doing its thing, you're doing your thing. And you just sit there with a the candle and pretty soon all your thoughts are all around here. They're like little bugs flying in and around the candle flame. Just the candle and I'll, I can look at the candle and I can see your glasses and I can see your shirt and I can see your dress. I can see all that. I can hear the door opening and I can hear myself talking and see my hands moving and feel my muscles. And there's just me and the candle. Just my witness and the candle is a witness and the rest of it's just all happening around us. And as I do this, after a while, pretty soon all this quiets down and I cease to be overwhelmed by all my senses until pretty soon there's just the candle and me. I didn't do anything. I didn't try to do anything. It just happened. And then if I keep doing that, 
pretty soon I am just there with the candle. Now that's one pointedness of mind, all right? You've calmed down, you're able to think of one thing. Right? Now the next part of that, of the next leg, is called dharana, which means doing the same thing on something inside. Like you take ajna, you take this point where these three, three nerves meet up here. And instead of looking at the cow, you close your eyes and you focus on that place right behind you, brow, right in there. And again, you just be there. And pretty soon that's where you are. That's all you are, is just a point of consciousness right there. That's it. There's not a body, there's nothing. There's just the point of consciousness right there. Now, when you have succeeded in doing that, you are nearly home. Then you hold it longer and longer, and it's called dhyana, and you hold it longer and longer, and you go into samadhi. Now, as you go, there are different levels of samadhi, which is this state where you flip over and you just, that place, that's all. You've given up everything else but that place. You're still in form, you're still being a candle flame. At that point, you can perform a thing called samyama, because at that point, you see, you have freed your consciousness from your body. In other words, you have overridden that veil of ignorance which con had convinced you all those years that you, which is your pure consciousness, and that body and mind were one and the same thing. And by going down and down to that one place and then going behind, right back in there, you get to a place where you're just pure consciousness. And then, if you are in the candle flame, that's where you are. And samyama is the quality of getting outside of the egocentric predicament. So that when you perform samyama on something, like another person's mind, you are their mind. Literally. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not putting you on. It's not mind reading. You are there. That's where you are, because you're not here, certainly. Because you left your body. 